Let us look at application of percentage. Let us take an example. What will result when we successively increase 120 by 10 percent, 11.11 percent, 12.5 percent and 14.28 percent. Now four different percentages. First of all, let us get to basics. Let us convert them into ratios. So 10 percent becomes 1 upon 10, 11.11 percent becomes 1 upon 9, 12.5 percent becomes 1 upon 8 and 14.28 percent becomes 1 upon 7. Now we have to increase by each one of them. So if we have to increase what do we do? We add the denominator to the numerator. So 1 upon 10 will convert into 11 upon 10, similarly 10 upon 9, similarly 9 upon 8 and 8 upon 7. Now we need successive multiplication of these in order to give a successive increase of 120 by these percentages. So 120 multiplied by 11 upon 10, multiplied by 10 upon 9, multiplied by 9 upon 8, multiplied by 8 upon 7. If we look closely, half the numbers are getting crisscrossed. So it is only 11 upon 7 which is left. So the question which looked slightly tougher earlier which was 10 percent, 11.11 percent, 12.5 percent and 4.28 percent has now become 11 upon 7. So 120 multiplied by 11 upon 7 will give us the answer. Let us take another example. Peter scored 30 percent in an exam and failed by 10 marks. Paul on the other hand scored 40 percent in the same exam and passed by 15 marks. What is the passing marks? So if I look at Peter, let us assume that the total marks was x. So he scored 30 percent, so which is nothing but 3 upon 10. So 3 upon 10 x, if we add 10 to it, he would have passed. So 3 upon 10 x plus 10 is passing marks. Let us look at Paul, 40 percent, 4 upon 10. So 4 upon 10 x, if we subtract 15 from there, he would have just passed. So 4 upon 10 x minus 10, 15 would give us the passing marks. So 3 upon 10 x plus 10 is equal to 4 upon 10 x minus 15. So solving this we get 1 upon 10 x is equal to 25. So passing marks becomes 250. Let us take another example. If the price of petrol increases by 25 percent, then by what amount the consumption has to be cut down in order to maintain the expenditure at the same level. Now what is this? If Suppose I go along with my car, take my car along and go for a refill. Now I normally spend 500 rupees. All of a sudden the price goes up by 25 percent. Now I do not end up spending say 25 percent more which is 125 rupees more on that day. If I fill for 500, I have to fill for 500. All of a sudden my habit will not change. So I have to cut down or I have to be ready to get that much lesser amount of petrol. But how does that happen in calculation? So if the price has gone up by 25 percent, what is the fraction? So 25 percent is 1 by 4, that converts to nothing but 5 by 4. So 5 by 4 x, suppose x is the old price, it has to be multiplied by the new quantity in order to maintain the ratio which is maintain the overall expenditure. So 5 by 4 x into God knows what into price is equal to the x into p. So if I invert the ratio which is 5 by 4 it will cancel out and it will result into x into p which is nothing but something on the other side. So 4 by 5 if I make the consumption that will solve the problem. Now let us convert this 4 by 5 back into percentage. 4 by 5 is nothing but 5 minus 1 upon 5 which is nothing but what 20 percent lesser. So a 25 percent increase in price of petrol will lead to 20 percent less consumption of petrol if I have to maintain the same expenditure. So this is how we calculate on a simpler term let us conclude here price increase there is a ratio so if we invert the ratio it will give me the consumption decrease ratio. So very very simply all we need to do is find the price increase ratio invert it get the consumption decrease ratio. Let us take another example if the income of A is 16.66 percent more than B what percentage is B's income less than A? A's income is 16.66 percent more than B. So 16.66 percent more that is what 1 upon 6 and more will give me one more which is 7 upon 6. So can I say that A is equal to 7 upon 6 B? What if we take the ratio on the other side? So B becomes 6 upon 7 A. Now 6 upon 7 A is what 1 minus 1 by 7 so which is 14.28 percent less. So B becomes 14.28 percent less than A. 
was it that simple now ratio makes it all the more simple so using percentage and ratio alternatively will help us solve things a lot easier and understand faster at the same time the calculation mistakes can also be avoided let's take an example to start with if the sides of a rectangle is 10% more than before then by what percentage will the area increase now let's go back to mensuration and find out what's the area of a rectangle so area is nothing but length into breadth here let's put the formula so length into breadth so length becomes 10% more so it becomes 1 by 10 okay 11 by 10 and same happens with the breadth so 11 by 10 L into 11 by 10 B will be the new area that will be nothing but 121 upon 100 which is what 21% increase so this is how a simple 10% increase in the sides of a rectangle will give us the difference of 21% on the area let's take another example a computer is marked 10% higher than the original price owing to the surge in demand the price is further hiked by 12.5% what is the final price compared to the original price now let's look at this there is an original price it is hiked it becomes a one price higher then it is further hiked so it becomes two times higher so there is a successive increase here let's look at the numbers 10% hike 10% is what 1 by 10 so that results in 11 by 10 then comes 12.5% which is what 1 upon 8 which results in 9 upon 8 so the final price will be nothing but 11 by 10 into 9 by 8 into the original price which is 99 upon 80 which is 123.75% so the increase is 23.75% on the original price let's try something different now in a sugar solution of 10 liters there is 20% sugar what is the quantity of water which needs to be evaporated to make it 40% sugar let's first understand what exactly the question is asking a 10 liter solution which has 20% sugar so it should contain how much 20% sugar 10 into 20% is what 2 liters of sugar in it but the question is saying that we need to evaporate water to make it 40% sugar why evaporate water now 10 liter 40% sugar solution will be what 10 into 40% is 4 liters of sugar we are not supposed to add sugar so if we want to increase the concentration we need to reduce the quantity of water and reducing the quantity of water means to evaporate water we cannot evaporate or we cannot do without evaporating because it's a solution so we evaporate water so that is done now 40 percent into what quantity of final solution will give me the same which is 2 liters of pure sugar in the original solution so 40 percent into x should give me 2 liters so 40 percent of what 5 will give me 2 liters so this is how these kind of questions can also be tackled percentage as a topic can be used anywhere in mathematics right from time speed distance to profit and loss to simple interest whatever it can be so it's very important to get your hold on percentage in order to calculate faster and make it easier for you in the actual exams